Now that we have the basics down, we're going to look a little more closely at what's going on with this model. And to do so, it helps us to look at the start of the epidemic, because that's a really interesting time to see how things evolve. And that what happens right at the beginning is also of great interest when setting health policy, as we'll see in a little bit. So let's say that we're going to say that we're going to define T naught as the start the start time of epidemic. And at T naught, we have I equal to one. The number of people in the infected population is one. We have an index case, the first person with this disease. And so if I is one at time T naught, then that means that S, the number of people in S, is approximately N. It's not quite N, it's technically N minus one. But if N is large, eh, S is approximately N. So we're going to approximate S as N. And we're going to see what happens when we take a look at this equation at the initial times. So let's go ahead and look at this. We're going to say I naught, right, rate of change at t at t0 which i'm just going to simplify and simply call it i i uh, i dot at 0 is going to be equal to beta s i over n minus gamma i but because of our assumptions of what happens at t naught i is just one so that goes away that goes away and similarly, S is approximately N. And look, that means we get to rewrite this as N. And N over N is 1, so this just goes away. And what are we left with? We're now left with beta minus gamma. Well, that's easy. It's also very important and extremely convenient. Let's gonna, this is going to look a little weird, but humor me. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this and multiply and divide by gamma for a very specific reason. Because what this comes out to then, if I do that and I distribute as I want, is I'm going to get a term gamma times beta over gamma minus one. That was set up intentionally. Why? Because this property right here, this value is R naught. You set this equal to gamma R naught minus one. And look at what this is saying here. This is saying that the rate of change, the number of people that are added or subtracted to the infected population at the very first time, initially, as the epidemic is just about to grow because we only have one infected person, is determined entirely by this equation, gamma, beta over gamma minus one, and that is that beta over gamma is termed as R naught. If you look at this, you can see then that for an infection to be positive, for the rate of change here to be greater than zero, right? for new people to be added to this pool, R naught here has to be greater than one. And if it's greater than one, you have an epidemic. That means that in time, as the dynamical system evolves across time, the number of people in I are going to grow. If R naught is less than one, you will not have an epidemic. No epidemic. Why? because the number of people that are being added, right, the rate of change of the infected population is going to be negative. And so even from the very first case, the infected pool is going to, is going to fall and you aren't going to get a spread of the disease. This term, R0, is critically important in 
epidemiology and health policy. It's called the basic reproductive number of, of, of basically of, of, of an infection. And epidemiologists and people that set health, health policy are very concerned about what this R naught is. Because if it's greater than one, suddenly that particular type of disease is a health is a is a is a is a health risk in populations. If it's less than one, they tend not to care. How much greater it is than one is also of serious concern. If and this number is extremely large, like in the case of say measles, which is something on the order of like 13 or 15, then that particular disease can spread like wildfire throughout a population. Because what is it saying? It's saying that for every person that's infected, our not number of additional people are going are expected to be infected by that individual person. So it's the rate at which, it's, the, it's, the, it's how many multiples of people are infected based on every individual index case. So my measles spreads really quickly. Other diseases, not so much. We're really terrified about Ebola, and we hear a lot about that often in the news, but it turns out it's, it's R0 is on the order of like two or three. And so it doesn't really pose that much of a health risk in a first world society because we have good health policies, we have good quarantine practices, and with an R0 of around two or three, if you, as long as you have maintained good quarantine policies, you'll be fine. It won't really spread throughout the population very much. However, we could never pull that off with measles. Measles spreads way too quickly for it to simply be solved and addressed by quarantine policies. And so for something with an R not that large, you really would like to see a vaccine present because that's the level of, that's the level of, of protection you need to minimize the spread of infection when you have an R not that large. Mercifully, we do have a vaccine for measles. But at the same time, right, this helps explain why the need or, or urgency for a, or an Ebola vaccine, at least in the US, is really not that big of a deal because we uh, can organize uh, the, the policy procedures such that quarantines are effective. So there it is. There's the basic introduction to looking at how you can start poking around this equation, this, this dynamical system, these systems of equations look, do some very simple analysis at what happens around time not and derive a very key principle, a uh, very key, key parameter called R naught, which is the basic reproductive number of a disease.